взялся это бой. Мы его уже мустолим точно больше двух месяцев. Поэтому, ребят, отмечайте его все в комментариях. Пишите ему, чтобы наверняка состоялся этот бой. Все, всех обнял, поднял, заплакал. The life of a viral internet star is an interesting phenomenon. By pure chance, a random nobody can be thrust into the spotlight and become a household name basically overnight. In my quest to categorize the crazy and sometimes degenerate people all across the globe, we are finally arriving in the great northern nation of Russia. Today we're going to be talking about one of the strangest people I've ever personally seen, Kirill Tirshin, the Russian Popeye, or Bazooka Arms. He's a young Instagram influencer from Russia that's achieved the much coveted title of internet celery in one of the most extreme ways possible, by permanently altering his body. This isn't a visual trick. Those aren't skin-colored swimming duckies. His arms are actually that size. Kirill is a prime example of the extent a person will go to to keep themselves in the spotlight and the sometimes dangerous route they take to keep people's attention on them, which he definitely has in his short three-year internet career. At this time, Kirill is basically a C-list celebrity in Russia. He's been on countless talk shows, some very strange reality contests, countless video collaborations with other Russian e celebrities. I wouldn't go as far as to label him a legitimate celebrity. For that, you have to have some kind of fan base. Bazooka biceps? Well, he's, he's widely disliked. It might not be apparent right off the bat due to the language barrier we have up here in North America, but don't be fooled. It's one of those situations where he's not famous per se, he's more infamous than anything. I've seen a lot of Russian people compare him to Daniel Bergoli, not because of their behavior or personality, they're nothing alike in that sense. Where they are comparable though is how they achieve their notoriety. Both were viral sensations that capitalized off their public controversy they were able to stir up, Danielle for her outraged behavior, and Kirill for his outrageous appearance. You might be asking yourself, what the hell is going on with this kid's arms? It's okay. We have a pretty diverse group of people here that watch my videos. Some of you may not be familiar with synthol. For the few that might be unaware, I'll give you a quick rundown. Synthol is a compound, usually oil-based, that is used from time to time in bodybuilding to temporarily enlarge a muscle. It's usually used in contest prep to target smaller muscles that might be underdeveloped or lagging in growth. Synthol often gets grouped in with other performance enhancers like steroids because of how it's administered, but it's actually very different. It doesn't have any muscle building properties or performance benefits, but it does swell and inflame the muscle and make it look larger. Most of the bodybuilders who use it use it to increase the size of their biceps, triceps, calves, and it's used in smaller amounts. Bazooka Arms, as you probably could have guessed, has partook in some synthol use, a hell of a lot of it. And it's no real big secret, he's pretty open about it. Which is insane on its own, but what makes it so much worse. See, instead of using a legitimate product, if, if you can even really say that for synthol, Kirill just made his own. He devised a homemade recipe, primarily made of petroleum jelly, and just pumped ridiculous amounts of it into his arms. Approximately 3 liters in total, give or take a tube or two. Usually with these synthol freaks, it takes a few years for them to get to this point. Kirill on the other hand, it only took him about a year to completely destroy his arms. It's kind of crazy to think that this guy's only 23 and he's facing amputation. The worst part about all this is if you actually look back, when he was a teenager, he was actually decently built and he had some muscle naturally. I'd actually say he was more muscular before. His arms don't cut it at all at this point. There's nothing left from there anymore. It's all for show. <laughs> and it's vastly affecting the kid's health. You can see it in his complexion, his midsection. He also looks like he's got food poisoning all the time. I don't even think he can properly work out anymore. He went into detail in one interview about how detrimental this was to his health when he was doing it full time. He said that after working on his arms, he often became violently ill, massive fevers, became bedridden for days, but yet kept on doing it. According to him, this whole shit show started shortly after he left the military while he was working as a security guard. My best guess is he lost some weight while he was serving and he didn't really deal with it the best way. In Russia, they have a somewhat mandatory military draft for males that the majority of the people have to partake in. There are a few exclusions, but more or less, if you're a fit male with free time, you gotta go. Creel was one of those cases. Once his mandatory service was completed, he started experimenting with the synthol concoction, which would send him down this crazy road of attention-seeking and insane measures that we see now. And it's quite a spectacle, if I'm being honest. The definition of a dumpster fire. Ever since his little tour on Russian network television in late 2017, 
Kirill has been constantly upping the ante and continuously doing things that are borderline trollish to stay in the spotlight. The initial effect when you look at Bazooka Boy is shock. You're shocked at first. He doesn't look natural at all in any sense of the word. But as soon as that shock wears off, it kind of registers what you're seeing, it kind of becomes concerning. And a lot of people have expressed their concerns, from medical professionals to his followers. I don't blame him. Those arms are looking way past their expiry date. But Krill just pushes it aside and keeps on going. In his mind, there's nothing different from him or any other bodybuilder. And I think that's where a lot of the general disdain for him comes from. Some people think he needs to be locked up and assessed at this point. He is, in fact, putting his future in jeopardy. Odds are he's going to lose one or both of his arms. The best case scenario, he's going to have a lifetime of issues and surgery just to keep functionality. Just because of how grim the situation is, it kind of makes me feel bad for the guy. But in reality, it seems he just doesn't care. Either that or the attention and financial incentive just overrides any logic in his head. This is an interesting concept we might explore at a later date. The concept of destroying yourself for attention and monetary gain. You see it more often than you think, and in many different forms. Anyway, in Kirill's situation, there definitely is a financial incentive here. In no way do I think this guy's a millionaire or anything like that. He had to crowdfund for surgery last year. But I definitely think he's in a better financial situation than he was before he went viral in 2017. And this might be the only way for him to make a decent living at this point. It's hard to say how long it'll last though. The life of a viral star is a strange one. And at any time, it could be ripped from you as fast as you got it. I think part of Kirill realizes this. Over the last two years, he's went through a couple strange phases to keep people talking about him. At the beginning of 2018, he started claiming that he was going to start competing in bodybuilding, which sparked a lot of controversy online. The idea of Kirill actually competing is a complete joke. His idea of training consists of zero weightlifting and daily routines of ejecting cups of petroleum jelly into his body. Until he passes out. Like you can expect, his bodybuilding career was short-lived. He claimed that as soon as he started injecting into his shoulders, he started to get really sick again. While this was going on in early 2018, he also started this weird semi-online relationship with another Russian celebrity, Olesia Malibu. Part of me just believes this whole thing was just for Instagram likes, and might have been an elaborate troll on her end. I'm not sure yet. They only dated for a few months, and she told Kirill that she couldn't have sex with him before marriage, which at face value isn't too shocking. But it's actually kind of funny because uh, Miss Malibu here, as far as my understanding goes, got into some trouble in 2015 for being a high-end Russian escort. So uh, I don't, maybe she's like a reborn again Christian now or something. I, I don't know. Kirill being the typical thirsty simp obviously proposed to her. Now, I don't know if this whole thing was just for Instagram likes like I mentioned. The story goes that these two started dating in 2018. They posted a bunch of pictures on Instagram and there's a bunch of online articles and blogs written about it. They even took pictures in wedding dresses and whatnot. Normal stuff. Well, at the same time, Kirill was actually starting to experiment with different looks. First, he adopted a Joker-esque style. Obviously didn't work out though. He picked the fucking lame Joker. And then he took on a more, how do you say, um, I'll just show you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is some weird Russian cosplay I don't know about, but uh, he may have went through a little bit of a cross-dressing phase. He also stated that he was thinking about getting double Ds to fill the dress out. Eventually hit the middle ground and he decided just to shave his eyebrows. Kirill's time with Olesia had an interesting influence on him. Olesia was also trying to convince him to get ass implants, and he eventually got calf implants. Apparently the surgeon would only do it if Kirill promised to not inject anything to his legs. Then she eventually broke up with him days before the actual wedding was supposed to take place and claimed he was cheating on her with hookers. I don't know, Russian social media is a strange place. Like, the doctors are telling him he's probably going to lose an arm, and then his pseudo-online girlfriend's like, well, that's nice and all, but uh, I think you could really use some ass implants, you know? That'll get us some more likes on Instagram. You gotta watch out for those Russian women. After the breakup, Kirill quickly rebounded. He grabbed a razor, shaved his eyebrows, and he was right back into the game. By the end of 2018, he had another fake engagement to another online personality. The boy moves fast. Okay, I know it's safe to say that a lot of these events are pretty much just for Instagram interactions and to keep people talking. I doubt anyone really thought Kirill and Alessa were in a legitimate relationship. He might have thought he had a chance. She was just in it for the clout. It's hard to actually tell how much of this is an act on Kirill's part. He plays an idiot so well. It's an interesting mix because he without a doubt plays into the controversy he creates. But at the same time, there's obviously some underlying issues here because no normal well-adjusted person would ever find themselves in this situation to even begin with. It's hard to relate or, or empathize with them. Take the eyebrows and the dresses for an example. Is that him purposely acting ridiculous to stir up controversy? 
or does he actually believe shaving his eyebrows will get him laid? It's hard to say. He is the dummy that pumped his arms full of Astro Glide. In reality, it's probably a healthy mix of the two. It's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, the last year has been pretty interesting. Kirilla's kind of found a routine and rhythm in all this chaos. He's managed to turn his freak show-esque appearance into a method to sustain a lifestyle and produce an income through video shoutouts and collaborations with other smaller influencers. I'm not aware of the exact specifics in regard to Instagram and any sort of monetization they may have over there, aside from individual product sponsorships, but I'm almost certain Kirill is compensated for his collaborations with other Russian online personalities. Or in some cases, they probably actually pay him. He does a lot of smaller, short skits with other people, and they seem to be mainly designed for cross-promotion. That's the only way I really see Kirill being able to monetize his situation. He is in no way a legitimate athlete. His YouTube channel isn't very viable either. It's a lot smaller than his Instagram presence, which in the end he's lucky to have built because he doesn't really have any other options now. I doubt he can even do anything physically strenuous anymore. He likes to pretend he's fit, but think about it. He's walking around with grapefruit sized abscesses in his arms. He's constantly dealing with side effects related to his injections. His hands and lower arms have circulation issues, his lymph nodes are swollen, he's borderline disabled. A normal career might not even be viable for him any longer. Luckily he still does have some name value attached to him, so he's able to network with others and make appearances at events and contests. A good example of this would be his venture into the realm of Russian combat sports. In May of last year he entered the Faces of Stone competition. One of my favorites by the way. He was lucky enough to show us his power against none other than their current champion. Just a typical day in Mother Russia. Nothing to see here. Oh man, a concussion is the last thing Kirill needs. I don't think anybody expected him to win. I don't think even he did. But it was a spectacle just because of the shock value associated with his appearance. And that's basically his only trick at this point. And that trick is getting kind of old. A few months after that slap fight, during the following summer, Kirill's health started to really decline again. To a lot of people's surprise, he went on social media and finally addressed the situation like an adult and expressed some concern for the first time. At this point, it's safe to say Kirill has still been injecting his arms, maybe not as much as he was initially, but if I had to guess, I'm pretty sure he was still doing it during the majority of 2019 in between his collaborations and appearances. And it was really starting to look bad which is saying a lot in this situation. But at first it seemed like Bazooka Boy was starting to come to his senses a bit. His plan was to crowdfund enough money to go to the UK to get surgery and salvage his arms. I don't think he made the donation goal because he never ended up going to the UK, but there was a nice added side effect regardless. The public was actually starting to sympathize with him slightly. For a couple months after his plea online, he was being treated in Russia to bring down the size of his arms, but it would only be a momentary fix because three months later he was back to injecting his arms again and pretending to be an athlete. Last October, Kirill agreed to partake in an amateur MMA match against another smaller Russian vlogger, Oleg. Kirill put up a couple short clips of him messing around online in a gym to hype it up, and surprisingly they actually fought. Mind you, it was a sad fight, and more of a sparring match than anything. When this was happening late last year, it was hyped online as a legitimate fight. Which is kind of funny when you think about it. It's kind of just another joke fight or borderline skit.
Kirill moves like he's on death's doorstep, and he was completely outclassed by a dude twice his age. If anyone was wondering, he had zero intention to ever move into fighting. He was pretty much on dialysis leading up to this fight. It's basically just for cross promotion. And I bet Oleg had to pay out of the pocket for this to happen. Believe it or not, if you're Russian, a collaboration with Kirill is amazing for your social media. He may be widely disliked, but he's highly followed. Just from that one video with Kirill, Oleg gained 39,000 subscribers and 5 million views. It took me a year and a half to get that. Him and Kirill did that in one three minute rub and slug. That's kind of crazy. If you speak Russian and you want to jumpstart some kind of online presence, just hit up Kirill's manager and pay him for a collaboration. I bet Oleg was satisfied with the results. Kirill, on the other hand, wasn't looking too good. Four weeks after that fight, he had to get a substantial amount of his triceps removed. Three pounds of rotten abscess tissue. He's lucky he didn't lose the whole arm. He's a trooper though. He still had things to do in the bodybuilding world. So we revealed his secret weapon that he was going to use to rebuild his muscle. Cat food. Yep, this man ate cat food for Instagram likes. It's a hard life out there in Russia. I have to clarify, even though Kirill is marketed as a bodybuilder or fighter, you can't really classify him as either. You can't even really classify him as an athlete. Let's be real, he's kinda just a freak show entertainer that has sacrificed his body for fame and brought on a lot of unnecessary problems upon himself. He's been warned by countless people, family, friends, doctors, but yet he keeps pushing the envelope and literally putting his own life in danger for his online presence. I hate to say, but it eventually gets to the point where it's old and you stop feeling sorry for the guy. No one put a gun to his head and made him do this. He did it. And right now, if he had the chance to go back in time, I don't think he'd do anything differently. I do have to give him credit for one thing though. The guy still manages to keep a positive outlook. Whether that's from denial or not, it's still kind of up in the air. But it's important to note, not a lot of people would be smiling when their arms are about to get repoed by God himself. So in conclusion, the biggest question someone might have coming out of this is uh, is why? Well, why would someone go to this extent? How could someone find themselves in this situation? Well, I'm not a therapist or anything, but uh, I do see a few things that might have influenced it. There's a cultural and financial aspect here. Elective surgery is everywhere, but it seems to be a lot more socially acceptable in Russia. They go big, and there isn't really that taboo where they want to keep it a secret or discreet like they do here in Western culture. And more importantly, it seems that Kirill isn't really the brightest. I'm not saying the dude's mentally disabled, but he's definitely got some cognitive dissonance here, where he doesn't realize what he's actually doing. There also very well might be some kind of body dysmorphia, which is a lot more prevalent in bodybuilding than people like to acknowledge. When you add those things together and the potential financial and fame aspect to being a viral star, it makes it a little easier to see how someone in his situation would end up finding themselves riding this circus out to the end. The dude's got himself stuck in a brutal cycle, and to top it off, he doesn't have a lot to fall back on outside of his shock value associated with his appearance. But that's his only real draw here, the shock value. But the thing about shock value is, you have to keep the momentum going with it or people will quickly forget and move on. And momentum is something I don't see Kirill keeping up with any longer. As strange as it is to say with a serious face, this guy is actually running out of places to inflate. And I'm a little worried to see what he's got next on the docket.